you stand with me as we read the Word of God, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and uh, verses 1 to 3. You know where the book of Habakkuk is, right? If you're in the New Testament, you're in the wrong place. Let's go back a few books. Praise the Lord. Are you there? Are you there? Okay, if you're there, can you just holler word? Oh, that was just some people. Uh, if you're there, can you holler back to me word? Okay, I think we're all there now. It says in verse 1, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not die. Though it, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. How many of us this morning are expecting uh, some things that have tarried in your life? How many of us are expecting uh, that there will be something great uh, that God uh, is going to do for you in 2020? Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, O oh God, that you are here in the midst of your people. O oh God, to impart revelation, impart, O oh God, unto us your word. O oh God, give us a renewed vision to help us refocus on our minds, our thoughts, our eyes on you. Lord, as we move forward in this year, in this new decade that you have brought us into, in Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Also in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 18, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. See, we can talk about vision, but if we don't have a strategy to get there and to get where God is calling us, we'll never be there. We must have a strategy on how to get what, where we are going or what we are seeing in front of us. And I believe that this year, it is not only what we're going to talk about because uh, we have been talking about what we see uh, and vision for a long time, uh, but I believe uh, that this year, vision uh, is going to be manifested. We are going to have a manifested vision. And Pastor John was talking about expectation. And expectation means that our faith is going to come to a new level. For that which what we have seen in the past, it is going to come to pass. It will come to pass. And I believe that God uh, had brought, uh, have brought us into a new decade, into a new season, uh, not to leave us alone, uh, but to manifest uh, some things uh, that have been held back or been resisting uh, by the enemy. Hallelujah. And, and I also believe uh, that some things in our lives this year will be supernaturally manifested. Things that... Uh, you have talked about things that you have dreamed about. Uh, I believe that this year, the abstract uh, will be made plain uh, in 2020. Come on, are you here today? See, because uh, when we are dedicated uh, to the things of the Lord, uh, I believe a dedicated person uh, is a dangerous person. Dangerous not to your neighbor, but dangerous uh, to the enemy's camp uh, and to the things of this world. Uh, because we need uh, to get back to that place uh, of focus and vision uh, and, and fix our eyes uh, on Jesus uh, and be dedicated uh, to the task uh, that is before us. And this year I want to declare over you church today. That you don't just have vision, but we manifest vision. 
I said, I don't just want you to have vision. I would like you to manifest vision. Are you with me? Because we are the hands and feet of God. And God is going to use you and I to manifest what He has already declared. To to manifest what He has already promised. See, there are some things that will come to pass in this year that the enemy has been trying to resist. But I declare this morning in the name of Jesus uh, that in this year, your life uh, is going to manifest breakthrough. I declare this year that your life uh, is going to manifest victory. I declare that over your life today, uh, that your life is going to manifest purpose. uh, It's going to manifest power. It's going to manifest joy. uh, It's going to manifest peace. uh, It's going to manifest blessing. uh, And all that God has for you, uh, I declare that this year, it is going to manifest in your life. You see, you and I, we are sitting in a building. But I want to say this morning that most of us, uh, we have sat uh, in churches that we did not buy. We have sat in pews uh, that we did not pay for. We have come uh, through somebody else's legacy. uh, And if you go back, uh, those people, uh, they had a vision. uh, They had a purpose. uh, And they manifested that purpose uh, so that you and I, uh, we got saved. We, we had a place to meet. We had a chair to sit on or a pew or a bench or whatever it was. It was somebody else's vision that caused that to happen. And we are in that same place today, church. We want to move in vision so we can leave a legacy. So somebody else can sit in these chairs. Somebody else can fill this church. Our next generation will have a place that they can come and call their own. Because our vision is not only for now, but it's for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, if Jesus tarries. See, a lot of people have invested time and prayer and energy and effort so that we can be here today. And vision is the ability to see beyond where you're at. Vision is the ability to see beyond where you are right now. I know that we all make plans. We all have some things in mind for our lives. But what about our spiritual life and our spiritual journey? How how is that going? Do you have vision for where you see yourself this year? Did you do an inventory of last year, 2019, the things that you committed to do? Did you fulfill them? Did you grow? Did you excel in the things of God? Hallelujah. See, right here on my little tablet, I have a section that is called vision. And everything that God speaks into my life, I put it in there and go, constantly go back as a reminder of what God has promised me. See, when God gives you something and drops something in your spirit, uh, it may not happen now, uh, but he is working uh, and he is orchestrating things uh, so that you can walk uh, into the purpose uh, and the plan uh, and the destiny that God has for you. But God will only work with you uh, if you take the time uh, to work with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, because I just don't want natural vision, But I want supernatural vision. I want spiritual vision. The Bible says, uh, if we have ears to hear, let us hear. Ears not in the natural only, uh, but ears in the spirit to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. See, in life what we see, and and this is a saying that we, we, we hear all the time. What you see before you is what you get. But can I say this to you this morning? What you don't see, you can hardly get. 
what you don't see, you can hardly get. In other words, you got to see it before you can seize it. You, you have to behold it before you hold it. You, you have to see things as they are not, as though they were, before you can acquire it. See, what I'm saying is, uh, you got to see through the eyes of the Spirit uh, and through faith. Uh, you have to see it uh, in the Spirit uh, before you can hold it uh, in the physical. And our vision, uh, it goes beyond uh, the natural. Uh, it goes into the spirit realm uh, where we can see things clearly. Uh, and then it will be manifested uh, as we work with God, uh, as we are faithful to him. Uh, he will manifest it in your life, in your family, in your workplace, uh, and in the church. Hallelujah. See, there's a great story in, in the book of Genesis with Abraham. In, Abraham, in, in Genesis chapter 13, there, are, there is a story there about Abraham and Lot. And Abraham, he received a word from God because they had grown so rich. And they were constantly fighting against each other, his workmen, Lot's workmen, and Abraham's uh, shepherds. Uh, so they decided that, hey, uh, we're going to part ways. So they come to this place, and he, he gave his nephew Lot first preference. Wherever you go, I will go the opposite direction. So Lot, he looked across the plains, uh, and he saw all the green grass, and he said, that will be good for me and my herds and my flock. And he separated and he went his way. But then Abraham was left standing there and the Lord spoke to him. And he said, Abraham, look up, lift your eyes and look all around you and see what you see. You see, God gave Abraham a vision, a physical vision of what he wanted him to receive. But his his. Uh, uh, what, what, the, the, the word that he got, uh, it was locked up. Uh, he had to act that out uh, in order for him to receive it. You see, what God was trying to, to show Abraham uh, is that all the time uh, he was just looking around him. He was looking down, uh, but God was trying to tell Abraham, uh, it's time to look uh, up, uh, lift your eyes up uh, and begin looking uh, at me. And I believe sometimes uh, we are the same. Uh, we look all around us. Uh, we look at everything that is going on down here. And we are not looking up. Uh, the Bible says, uh, lift up your eyes uh, unto the hills uh, from whence cometh your help. Uh, for your help, uh, it comes from the Lord. To Abraham, he received the word uh, from God. Uh, and it was locked up in a vision. The interesting thing was this. Uh, it was after that Lot separated from a Abraham. Uh, it's that vision began to manifest. It was after he separated and went uh, in different direction. Uh, that that vision uh, began to take place. Uh, hallelujah. See sometimes. In our own lives, in our own surroundings, sometimes we need to separate from some things, from some situation, from some people, from some habits, from things that are in your life for the vision of God to be fully manifested. See, when we use that term that, that Abraham separated from Lot, it sounds like a Sunday school term. It sounds very, you know, normal, not anything profound. But you see, when you understand the meaning of the word of the name Lot, it really adds revelation to what uh, the story is talking about. You see, Lot, uh, it means covering uh, or a veil. 
And I believe that in this room today, there are, if not all of us, uh, we deal uh, with a lot in our lives. Something that covers or veils our eyesight. It veils our perception. It veils the vision of what God has for our lives. And I believe that there must be a certain level or a certain degree of separation from some things, from some people. Because you don't get their negative presence for what God has in store for you. Well, let me summarize it in one sentence. Their negative presence will hide God's vision. See, that is what Lot was doing to Abraham. Because all of the negativity and the fighting, Abraham was losing sight that God said, I'm going to make you a mighty nation. He was losing sight of the vision. It was, high, it was hidden because of the veil of his nephew being with him. Hallelujah. See, the enemy, the devil knows as long as you stay connected to them, you will not see the totality of God's vision for your life. But I'm here this morning to tell you that in 2020, God is separating you from the negative resources and he's going to plug you in and into a season of lifting your eyes up onto the hills, lifting your eyes and looking above and God is going to manifest victory in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 15, the, the, the Bible says, The land which, I, which you see, I will give it to your descendants uh, forever. But in this context, the vision, it can be defined as this. And I want you to listen to this very carefully. Picture, it is a picture of a preferred, prospered, blessed, and breakthrough future. Are, are you there? I'm declaring over your life today uh, that you are going to have uh, a preferred, uh, prospered, uh, blessed, uh, and breakthrough future. I'm declaring, uh, I mean 60% of us are there. I'm declaring over your life uh, in 2020, uh, you're going to have uh, a preferred, uh, a prospered, uh, a blessed, uh, and a breakthrough uh, 2020. Remember that little song, Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham, he had a preferred, he had a prospered, he had a blessed life, he had a breakthrough future. I'm declaring that over to you today, church. Hallelujah. See, because a person with vision has a deliberate destiny. A person with vision, they have a deliberate destiny. It means that you're not groping around in the dark. It means that you're not feeling your way out. It means that you have a, a deliberate, your eyes is fixed on what God has, sp has spoken to you. Your eyes are fixed on that and you are moving forward. You are not feeling things out and trying things out. You are deliberate in your decision. You are deliberate in your actions. You are deliberate in your planning. You are deliberate in everything that you do because people with vision, they take deliberate actions. The Lord said to Abraham, look around and see the land that I've given to you. Look around you and look at what you see. Can you ask your neighbor this morning, what do you see? Oh, we're not friendly this morning with your neighbor. Just ask your neighbor, what do you see? What do you see? Hallelujah. See, a lot of people today, all they can see is defeat. 
They can see despair. They can see anxiety. They can see fear. They can see problems. But can I say to you this morning, church, we need to start seeing differently. I declare to you this morning that you will begin to see success. You're going to see increase. You're going to see revival. You're going to see victory. You're going to see power. You're going to see joy. You're going to see prayers answered. You're going to see walls breaking down. You're going to see chains break off your life. Begin to see see uh, through the eyes uh, of the spirit stop looking at the negative things uh, the negative situations uh, begin to see uh, that God is a God uh, of goodness uh, he is a good God uh, he wants to bless you uh, like little children hallelujah see don't look around and who said this and who said what and he said and Jim said and this one said. Uh, don't look around. Uh, there will always be haters and uh, doubters uh, and unbelievers in 2020. Uh, and hear this. Uh, and then there will be you. And here, who are you? Uh, you uh, are the empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, to prove them wrong. If you buy in... Uh, to all the criticism and the negativity, uh, you will become one of them. Uh, but if you separate yourself, uh, like Lot did from Abraham, uh, you will become uh, the empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, to prove their, them wrong. Hallelujah. Because uh, a lot of people will say it can't be done. Uh, a lot of people said this building couldn't be here, but it is here. We prove them wrong. People said we couldn't pay off for it, uh, but this year it's going to be paid off. We got to separate uh, what we see uh, from the haters and the doubters. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that for it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my But it's by my spirit, uh, it says the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I believe uh, that in the year 2020, it's a year of clear vision uh, and as it relates to your future. There will be great achievers. Uh, there will be great things that will happen in your life uh, because uh, God says, I'm separating you uh, from the rest uh, and I'm empowering you uh, by my spirit uh, so you can make a difference uh, this year, not only in the church, uh, but outside of the church. See, because all great achievers, whether it be in family, whether it be in life, uh, industry, business, uh, they are people of vision. They are people with clear vision, deliberate vision. Hallelujah. There is four points I just want to run over quickly. Four ways that we can manifest vision in 2020. The first one is vision requires declaration. Vision requires declaration. And if we read the, the, the text that I, wrote this, I read this morning, the first one says, uh, I will. I will stand upon my watch. It's important. I will. Can you declare that this morning? If I will, uh, God will. If I will... Uh, God will. Come on, together now, church. If I will, God will. It's a declaration, and God wants you to declare the I will. And when you begin to declare the I will of the Lord, the Spirit of God is going to empower you to walk as an overcoming and a victorious Christian. I will. It's a declaration to stand firm, not to look around, not to look who is doing what, but I am focused. I will, Lord. You see, we all got to have a willing spirit. I will. You see, if Abraham was not willing, if Habakkuk was not willing to stand watch, it, the city would have been destroyed. But thank God for men who have given their lives by saying, I will. I know it might be tough. 
I know it might be hard. I know we don't have all the resources. I don't have all the ideas. But the important thing is to show up and say, I will. What did he say to Isaiah? He said, send me. If you need a man, send me. He was willing. Hallelujah. Just like Habakkuk, he says, I will. See, I will walk in power. I will be an overcomer. I will be a victor in Christ. I can do all things uh, through Christ who gives me the strength uh, and the ability uh, and the power to do it. I will. Oh, hallelujah. I will walk in victory. Uh, I will walk in breakthrough. Uh, I will walk in the anointing. I will stand upon my watch and, and sit upon my tower and will watch to see uh, what the Lord says. Uh, What Habakkuk was saying says, I want to get to the place of no distraction. I want to get to the place of no distraction, a, a place that I can focus. I want to be in a place where all the distracting voices, all of the distracting sounds will be silenced. And I want to hear what the Lord is saying about my future. See, because vision. It requires time. It requires time with God without distraction. Pastor John was just alluding, come to the church, leave everything at home, shut everything down and come with no distractions. You can spend some time and get focused, zero in on what God is saying to you. This past week, we had a week of praying and fasting. It is because we want to hear what God is saying to the church. We want to hear without distraction what God, we are separating ourselves from the busyness of life so that we can hear from God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The verse said, I will see what he said. In our modern day English terminology, that's not possible. How can you see what somebody says? You know, a lot of times we pick up the phone or we carry a message and I'm going to see what this person says. That doesn't, you hear with your ears and you see with your eyes. So how does those combine? Are we on the same page today? But God is saying, he says, I want to see what he says. See, church. When coming to God, we don't see through the eyes of the flesh. We see through the eyes of the Spirit. And that is when we can see what He says. When we see what He says, we will respond. Because we are seeing something we have never seen before. We will act on what we didn't see and we did not know because we are watching through the eyes of the Spirit. People will say that you can't, but God says you can because you have seen it in the Spirit. You have seen it in a realm that they know nothing of. They, can, they will say that you will break down, but God says, no, you're going to break through because you have seen it in the Spirit. Hallelujah. When they say death, God says life. When they say defeat, God says victory. I will stand on my watch and hear what God says. See, some people today, and, and we, we, we see this a lot. Some people have been taking advice from backseat drivers. Because... They are so looking for a word. I was sharing with Pastor John. I just flipped the TV on the other day. And there's another prophet in town that what I'm going to give you is this water. You don't have to buy it, but just sow a seed. I'm giving it free, but bathe with it, drink it, do whatever you want with it. The Bible says that with his stripes you are healed. He didn't say to drink any water. With his stripes you are healed. And it's for free. You don't have to pay for it. 
See, sometimes we are taking advice from backseat drivers uh, because uh, they don't know uh, how to get uh, where you are going. How can you take advice from people that don't know uh, where you are going? Uh, they are asking them how to get there. See, I want to see what God says. It means uh, I will see it once God says it. I will see it once God says it. In this year, in 2020, you have to remove all distractions uh, and see what God says so we can move forward. Hallelujah. In verse 2, it says, the Lord answered me. Habakkuk said, the Lord answered me. And literally, the translation of that, it can put it like this. Answered me. It literally means this. To eyeball, to speak, to sing, to shout, uh, and to testify. Hallelujah. So here's the declaration for 2020. The God of angels' armies uh, is going to answer you. Uh, he's going to eyeball you. Uh, he's going to speak to you. Uh, he's going to sing to you. Uh, he's going to shout to you. Uh, and he's going to testify uh, over your life. Okay, I think only this section got that. This morning, I want to declare to you. Listen to me, God wants to answer you in these ways. The God of angels' armies, he wants to answer you. He wants to eyeball you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to sing to you. He wants to shout to you. And he wants to testify about his goodness in your life. Hallelujah. Vision requires design. It says, write the vision down and make it plain. You see, your destiny requires design. It means that there is no doubt. It means that you've got to make it clear. You've got to write it down, make it easy to understand, and you don't have any complications with it. It has to be distinct and easy to understand. This morning, I just want to give you an assignment uh, on your way home today or while you're on your spare time. Uh, just write uh, the vision down. Write uh, what God has spoken into your life. Uh, write uh, what God is speaking to you. Uh, may Write it down. Uh, make it plain. Uh, pray over it. Uh, hang it up on your mirror. Put it somewhere. You can, it will be visible. Uh, it requires design. Uh, and as you look at it, uh, as you pray over it, uh, God is going to give you uh, the know-how. Uh, he's going to give you the strategy. He's going to give you all that you need uh, to fulfill uh, and accomplish that vision. Hallelujah. We need to make time for the things of the Lord. Uh, leave no doubt because my vision, uh, it will come to pass. Uh, our vision. And this is a collaborative vision. We want to see this church filled. We want to see 3,600 people in this ministry attending church to three times on a Sunday. That's our vision. It may seem impossible with these eyes, but through the Spirit, I've already seen it filled. I've already seen the parking lot. There is no space. I've already seen what God will do. Hallelujah. Write it down. We don't know all the ins and outs and the details, but God uh, will provide uh, the details. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says we only see in part uh, and we know in part. Uh, if God gives us everything, uh, we'll be overwhelmed. Uh, we'll be all of us will be in a psych ward somewhere because it's too much uh, for us to handle. The third one. Vision requires deployment. And the Lord answered and said, write the vision down and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it. Hallelujah. He may run. That he, the Bible talks, he may run. In other translations, it is called a herald. And a herald is somebody that runs. Anybody watch medieval times movies? 
a herald. He takes a message from one place or from the palace to somewhere else. And when he gets there, probably on foot or on horse, he runs there. But then he speaks. He gives the message. And this is what Habakkuk was talking about in this passage of scripture. You got to go about it. You got to be about it. But you also got to talk about it. You got to declare it. You got to speak it. You got to do something so that it will start taking shape and coming into, into, into progress. Hallelujah. Because I believe this year, somebody's breakthrough and somebody's victory begins in your mouth. I believe that this year, Somebody's victory and somebody's breakthrough, it's beginning in your mouth. And I want to declare over you this morning, your lips have been anointed with grace. Your lips have been anointed with, with grace. And what is grace? It is the unmerited favor of God. You are going to decree and declare things that God is going to put on your lips. Things that you did not deserve. Things that you are not even looking for. For God says, uh, in this year, you're going to start declaring things uh, because my grace uh, is made perfect uh, in your weakness. Hallelujah. Our lips have been anointed with the grace of God. We didn't deserve it, uh, but he, he loved us so much. Uh, he says, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just want to touch on this little thing here. It's a, a little bit of history, but it's important. The year in the Hebrew calendar that we are in, it is the year 5780. But it's not also a year, but it's actually entering into a new decade in the Hebrew calendar. And the decade that the, the Hebrew calendar calls it pay, P-E-Y. And what does pay mean? It is a decade of declarations. What did I say earlier? Your breakthrough will begin in your mouth. We are entering into a decade of declarations. And your mouth has been anointed with grace. So this season, what your breakthrough and what your victory is, it will come from your mouth. What you speak, what you declare, because inside of you, there is a fire. The Holy Ghost is inside of you. And he's going to empower you to decree and to declare over your life, over your family over your community, over this church, uh, over whatever you decide you're going to pray for, God is going to empower you to do it. Hallelujah. Can I, can I say it this way? Your mouth is your prophetic peace. Your, your mouth is your prophetic peace. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that you will decree a thing uh, and it will be established. The Bible says that life and death uh, is in the power of the tongue. Uh, and you see, this decade that we are entering into, uh, it is a decade of declaration. Uh, so church, uh, open your mouth and speak. Uh, do not be silent. Uh, declare and decree uh, the promises of God. Uh, declare the vision uh, he has laid upon your heart. Uh, so it will take effect. Uh, it will take root uh, and start moving forward. Hallelujah. Because I know that God is about to anoint your lips. To speak victory. Because conversation breeds association. And association determines assimilation. What does that mean? It means that you're going to get hooked up with some people. Uh, who believe that God, uh, whatever he has said, uh, he's going to do it. You will start decreeing some things. Uh, hallelujah. That people... Uh, would not believe you. 
But God will hook you up with some people, uh, people of faith, uh, people who are, are believing God for everything uh, that his word have declared. Uh, he's going to hook you up uh, with those type of people. Uh, not people pulling you down, uh, but people lifting you up. Uh, not people pulling you away, uh, but people encourage you uh, and pushing you forward. Hallelujah. I decree this year that you're going to walk in victory uh, and in the power of the Holy Ghost. Just approving the word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 14, I, I got a little ahead of myself, but it's all right. In verse 14 it says, Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, uh, because you speak this word, uh, behold, I will make my words uh, in your mouth. Uh, what's that word? I didn't hear you. What's that? Oh, come on. You're afraid of the fire? The Bible says here, uh, my words in your mouth uh, will be like uh, fire. And the people that you are speaking to, it will be like wood, uh, and it shall devour them. Hallelujah. What a promise. My word in your mouth. You're going to have fire in your soul. Because the Holy Spirit uh, is the fire that lives inside of you. Hallelujah. And when that fire begins to come out, uh, it will devour people, uh, the negative things. Uh, it will devour whatever is coming against you uh, because the fire of God uh, is powerful. Uh, the power of God, uh, it's, it is transcends anything uh, we can imagine or think. Hallelujah. Here's what the Lord says over your life in Matthew 6 and 4. Your father who sees you secretly will himself reward you openly. I want to declare this over your life today. This year, private promises and proclamations will become public promotions. This year, private promises and proclamations will become public promotions. What the Father sees in secret, He will reward you openly. What you have been declaring, uh, God sees you in the prayer closet. Uh, he sees you uh, when you wet your pillow at night. Uh, he sees you on your knees uh, until they're bruised. Uh, he sees your cry. Uh, he says, uh, those private prayers, uh, those private proclamations, uh, this year will become uh, public promotions. Hallelujah. See, this year the enemy uh, is losing his ability uh, to contain your fire. This year the enemy uh, is losing his ability uh, to contain your fire. Hallelujah. Because limitations uh, are burning off this year. Limitations uh, are burning off your life. Uh, this year you are going to hold uh, what you have seen. Hallelujah. Last point, vision requires determination. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Can you declare over your life it will surely come? Come on church. Speak it. It will surely come. It will surely come. I'm decreeing it, Lord. It shall surely come because I got a fire inside of me that says it is surely going to come to pass. We must have a made up mind. We must have a made up conscience. We must have a made up will that whatever comes our way, I will be determined because you promised it. It will surely come. I'm not giving up. See, the enemy sometimes think we're going to throw in the white flag uh, and surrender. But we're not surrendering to the enemy uh, because the God who is in us uh, is greater than he that is in the world. Uh, the devil taught uh, that you will throw in the towel, uh, but he was sadly mistaken uh, because this year limitations uh, are burning uh, off of your life. Hallelujah. 
Do not vacillate and go back, uh, but be determined to rise up uh, and believe everything uh, that God has for you. Uh, in 2020, uh, you rise, uh, you walk in power, you see victory, uh, you overcome, uh, you be filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and with fire. Hallelujah. Tarry in this, in this text, it means reluctant to manifest, uh, slow to come, delayed in appearance. Uh, but because it has been delayed, it does not mean it has been denied. If God promised, you wait for it. It will surely come. Hallelujah. Wait, it means to long for, to wait for its arrival, uh, to adhere. And that word adhere is very important. Uh, you need to stick to it. Uh, stick with the stuff. Uh, stick to prayer. Stick to waiting. Uh, stick to reading his word. Uh, stick to the promises. Uh, stick to declaring uh, what God has spoken over your life. Uh, and it uh, will surely uh, come. Uh, be determined uh, to keep moving forward. So you may have a bad, you have, may have had a bad 2019, but God uh, is about to put you on display uh, in 2020. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Uh, an appointed time is a, is a set time. It is uh, the right time. He said, uh, I have appointed you with destiny. You have an appointment with destiny. 2020 is my year of manifested vision. You have an appointment this year with power. You have an appointment this year with breakthrough. You have an appointment this year with healing. So don't miss your appointment. God says it is the appointed time. It is the season. It is the time for breakthrough. It is the time for healing. It is the time for revival. It is time for God to manifest himself in his church. Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor this morning, I have an appointment with destiny. Come on, can you say it like you believe it this morning? I have an appointment with destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have an appointment with breakthrough. Hallelujah. See, manifesting vision this year will require declaration. You got to talk about it. You got to speak about it. By speaking about it, it, it really demonstrates your faith in what you're saying. I'm saying it because I believe it. When you keep it quiet, it means that you're not too sure. But when you speak it out, you are deliberate. Manifesting vision will require design. Write it down. Make the vision plain. Look, go in the dictionary, look up the words, define it if you need to. Make it simple, easy to remember and understand. Vision will require deployment means you got to do something about it. Don't just dig a hole and bury your head. Do something about it. Pastor John says this all the time. God, busy people, God uses busy people. People that are busy, people who want to do something. He doesn't really like the people that, with that L word and ends in Y. He, he really, yeah, God likes busy people. He wants you to do something. Don't just sit and wait for the Holy Ghost bus to go to heaven. Hallelujah. I heard one minister said this. Don't sit like a lump on a log and sing in the Baptist national anthem. I shall not be moved. We need to do something. Deploy. <clears throat> we need to be deployed. Hallelujah. Vision requires determination see it is the spark of the fire that God is inside of you will give you perseverance will give you tenacity I am determined to do and to fulfill the vision that God has called me hallelujah would you stand to your feet this morning
Hallelujah. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready this morning to fulfill the vision that God has called all of us to fulfill? We have a corporate vision here at the church. But I know God has also spoken into your heart and in your life what He wants you to do and what He wants you to accomplish. And our prayer and our hope is that everybody in this sanctuary today would join in together with us to fulfill the vision and the mission of the church. And the mission is not just to fill this church. The mission is to fill heaven. The mission is to expand the kingdom of God. That is the real vision. But we have small things that we can do to bring about that vision. But it begins with the point of you saying, I will. I will. I know that I, I, I don't have all that it takes, but Lord, I will. You can count me in. Because I want to make a difference in the world that we're living in today. The Lord made a promise to Abraham. I will give you all that you see. God says to you this morning, everything that you have seen, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to release it. What you have seen, you will hold. It will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. See, we want to focus and drive to the vision because we want to leave a legacy to those that are coming behind. Hallelujah. Let us pray this morning. Hallelujah. This morning, if you're here and you're not here by chance, you came into the service today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because He's the one that will make everything you have in your heart come to pass. He's the one that will give you direction. He's the one that would lead your life uh, in the path that you ought to go. You have never given your life to Jesus. Would you slip your hand up? I, I just want to pray with you. I'm going to pray. So while I'm praying, just slip your hands up. So I just want to pray with you this morning. If there is one or two, yes, I see that hand. Let's commit your life this morning to Jesus. It will be the greatest decision that you've, you've ever made. Church, here's what I want us to do. In support of those that lifted their hands, let us pray this prayer together with them and encourage them. They might be standing or sitting next to you this morning. Just reach over a hand, put your hand on them and encourage them. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, I promise from today onwards, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to serve you. I'm determined from today to make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer for the first time, please come and see me or one of the ushers. We want to put some literature into your hands so you can you know, continue your walk and this commitment that you have made. Let us pray. Father, I pray for your people this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that this year we will be determined Oh God, to manifest the vision that you have placed in our hearts. We will manifest the vision of the church and we will also manifest the vision in our personal lives. We will be determined to do all that it takes. All that is required, oh God, we know with your help, we will not fail, but we will be a success. Lord, I just commit your people into your hands. As we go from this place, go with us. Let your blessing, let your grace, let your glory continue to rest upon us. Let your presence, O oh God, go with us. Holy Spirit, thank you for your fire that abides in our hearts, O oh God, that we will walk victorious in this coming week. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen.
If you're here this morning and you need further prayer, if you're sick in your body and you want us to pray and minister to you, please come up at the front. We're going to do that. Other than that, God bless you. You have a great day. Greet one another as you leave. Uh, and please make an effort to come back out tonight at our 630 service. God bless you. Hallelujah.